Hello and welcome you watching NDTV I am Vedant Agarwal a big focus well the Rajouri encounter finally ended on Thursday but at a big cost two brave hearts two army officers and three jawans were killed in action uh, during the day two day long gun battle in fact with terrorists in the Kala Kot region of Jammu two Pakistani terrorists one of them a Lashkar e Taiba sniper and explosives expert have been eliminated in the operation dense and low visibility of forests of the Peer Panjal range and uphill terrain were factors that proved a challenge but we have exclusive details on what actually transpired in that intense gun battle vishnu has more on this let's bring you details of this encounter it is um, in uh, uh, the, in the larger rajouri area two army captains have been killed in action three army jawans have lost their lives uh, the terrorists were on the run since the 19th the army launched the operation on the 20th the operations took place in ziarat mal in gulabgarh that's a forest area and it's adjoining solaki area it was uh, conducted about 3 kilometers from a place called kala kot the terrorists were believed to be hiding in the shelters uh, of the graziers on the 22nd of november in other words yesterday uh, captain mv pranjal of 63 rr that's the unit he came under fire from terrorists at the time he was speaking to a woman uh, inquiring about uh, whether there were uh, you know terrorists around or if there were strange people around when he was attacked he sustained a serious gunshot injury tragically uh, not surviving that but subsequently when he was shot Major DS Mehra of 9 Para attempted to rescue Captain Pranjal. Uh, Major Mehra drew fire in his direction. He too was shot. And when the situation started getting even worse, Captain uh, Shubham Gupta, Hawaldar Majid and Lance Naik Bisht intervened all in the effort of getting out their uh, injured partners. The terrorists at this stage were engaged and cornered and there was an active gun battle. the three jawans the two one, one officer and two jawans gupta majid and bisht received fatal gunshot injuries as they went in major mehra uh, who uh, they were trying to rescue at this stage um, has fortunately made it out he is stable another interesting and and uh, worrying aspect of all of this is that overnight between the 22nd and the 23rd pakistan attempted to fly in drones they did fly in drones to drop arms and ammunition for terrorists this would essentially be ammunition perhaps small pistols as well there are weight restrictions the army foiled uh, this drones resupply attempt these were quadcopters which were sent in uh, at 7:30 a.m. this morning the soldiers engaged one terrorist uh, and at 9 a.m. he was eliminated a paratrooper sachin of two para special forces uh, at this stage sustained fatal injuries so five he was the fifth and final soldier to have lost his life killed in action a second terrorist was hiding behind a sangar which is a stone structure in the uh, forest uh, a jawan of nine para was injured in the gun battle to get this final terrorist he was subsequently eliminated in all of this terrorists were firing from dominating heights visibility in the gulabgarh forest only 3 to 4 meters now there are some details of the terrorist who was involved the main terrorist has been identified as quadi uh, a pakistani lashkar sniper and explosives expert he was active in rajouri for over a year he was involved in at least three terror incidents to this year uh, um, uh, itself so five brave hearts lost their lives this of course questions now being raised on militancy resurfacing in the valley but moving now to our other big focus well it's a race against time in uttarkashi the 41 workers who are trapped under a collapsed tunnel in uttarakhand will be pulled out on wheelchairs one by one through a big pipe that is still being drilled to rescue them well rescue efforts in the sitkara tunnel resumed on thursday morning after an iron mesh that had come in the path of the auger machine drilling and escape path was removed but authorities are reluctant to put a timeline for the rescue efforts but it is hoped that the men will come out on friday well medical teams are on standby and chief minister pushkar singh dhami also visited the site on thursday and spoke to some of the trapped men there as well the machine is run out of it's like a little bit broken and also we've hit things that we weren't we, we were hoping we wouldn't hit and the things that we hit they're like machines like You see see the big like the big machine up on the hill there's one of them in there 
there's a big dumper in there. There's all these machines and there's the crushed tunnel. So we're trying to find a path through all of this and the rocks and everything. Um, almost we've done it, but we seem to have hit something. So we've paused. The machine's being repaired right now. It should be back in operation tomorrow. So it's been more than 270 hours since the construction workers have been tapped in the tunnel. And what is the latest from the new site here in Uttarkashi district of Uttarakhand is that the auger machine which the authorities were banking on to clear the rubble has yet again stopped working due to some technical snag. The officials have not divulged the details that what is, what is the reason or why the drilling has been suspended here. But what we are picking up is that like yesterday when the drilling machine or the auger machine hit a metal object, similarly today as well it has hit something due to which its blades have stopped working. But uh, what we have picked up is that till yesterday 45 meters of the rubble was cleared. Today it, can, it could only manage to clear 1.8 meters of the rubble inside the tunnel. As far as the rescue operation and preparation is concerned, the NDRF, the SDRF, uh, central agencies and officials from state and the central government are monitoring the situation and they say that there is no deadline as to when the, uh, the, the tunnel work or the construction workers will be pulled out of the tunnel. What they're doing right now is that they're drilling, the, uh, drilling through the rubble and fixing or installing that pipe through which a stretcher will be sent in and then one by one the workers will be asked to come out. The NDRF DG told today morning that one NDRF personnel will go towards that side of the rubble where the construction workers are stuck. There will be a preliminary health checkup and then he will monitor or guide the construction workers to go one by one through that tunnel on a stretcher which will be sent from this side of the tunnel. The other update is that uh, the NDMA member today in a press briefing said that one of the construction workers has committed or promised that he will guide all the, uh, the rest of the 40 construction workers and he has volunteered to be the leader of those construction workers saying that he will come out at the end until rest of the 40 make to the other end of the tunnel. Uh, as far as other updates are concerned, ambulances are here on a standby. Uh, there are other ambulances which are parked on the other side of the road from, uh, at a distance from the tunnel. Uh, nobody knows the exact deadline when this operation will get over. Today, General V.K. Singh, the Union Minister, Chief Minister Mr. Pushkar, Pushkar Singh Dhami visited, went inside the tunnel and also spoke to those construction workers who have been trapped here since November 12. He assured them that the authorities are working to get them out of the tunnel. Uh, he also spoke to them and, and assured them that the entire country or the nation is praying for them. But as of now, the big news is that the auger machine is not working and one of the officials told us that perhaps it will start working tomorrow morning at around 4 a.m. Now, since the deadline is not fixed for this operation, uh, we believe that perhaps this operation will stretch till tomorrow afternoon as well. And uh, as far as the health condition is concerned, some of the some of the construction workers trapped inside the tunnel have complained having some uh, problem in their eyes. So some eye drops have been sent through that food pipe which was installed day before yesterday. Fresh food has been going towards the construction workers, and very soon, when as and when this uh, this rescue operation gets over, and as and when the 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 construction workers come out of this tunnel, they will immediately be transferred to a makeshift hospital which is around half an hour uh, at a distance of half an hour from this Silkyara tunnel. In Uttarakashi with camera person Prem Singh Mohammad Ghazali for NDTV. And well, this as the anxious wait for co-workers and families of these construction workers continues. It's been uh, much more than a week and they are still anxious and nervous about the rescue operations. My colleague Tanish Punjabi spoke to the family of one such construction worker. Take a look. There is an eerie silence in the Motipur village. Ram Sundar is one of those persons who has been trapped in the tunnel for the past, for the past 12 days along with 40 others. We will try to speak to his mother how she has been dealing with this. आपकी अभी आखिरी बार कब आप उसको खबर मिली वहाँ की कि क्या क्या स्थिति है? खबर तो नहीं आवा है वह जान मोबाइल में देखा जाते हैं वह देखी था ही वह सुनी थे खबर और वह इसी के खबर कोई नहीं भेजा है कि मेरे है वो मेरे है क्योंकि लड़का गये चार महीना हुई गा चार महीना हुई गा दीपावली दिन ये हाल हुई गा 
ना चूली में है आगे रहा ना दीपावली जला है ना कहो हमारे चिंटक गुन्नक जा रहे का करी भैया एकदम ढोसा जीव मारा करत है तो हमारे बच्चे के यहाँ स्विस्टर के निकाल दे बड़ी है कहीं यहाँ हमारे बच्चे घर आ जाए ये है हमारे जीव का हाथ है कि आज हमारा लड़का आ जाए काल आ जाए बस बस आ जाए है ना हाँ हमारे दिल का हाथ है कि हम कब अपन बच्चे के यहाँ देखी बहुत दिल रोट है हमार बच्चे के यहाँ आज बारह दिन हुई गा बच्चे हमार कब देखा कहीं थे कब बोली लगा दिन भर रोई तो ही क्या करे एक तो हम बहुत जन्नाई मिला थे तो दो साल मेरे को जीव करा थे घर ही वो अंदर कहाँ था थे कहाँ नहीं कहाँ थे हमने बोया था हमने बच्चे के बहुत जल्दी कोशिश कर दिया भैया या आप लोग तो राजा कहीं से बहुत जल्दी निकल गए हैं आज बारह दिन ही क्या पूरा तोड़ो दीपावली उपवाली कुछ नहीं मनाई कस दीपावली है कस कहाँ है एक एक कौन चीज नहीं खाएं पीएं कस वैसे ही पड़ा रहा है खाना वैसे ही पड़ा रहा है जाते हैं वही खावाई नहीं समझे पूछा एक तो थोड़े थोड़े खाए लेते नहीं हुआ वही जाते हैं खाए बहुत हमारे बच्चन के समस्ये भगवान दान दर दिन की दान नहीं उगारा थे यार हाल पलक उठाए के भगवान हिर रहे हमारे बच्चन के हैं तो आजकल निकल जिए a heart-wrenching account of a mother there are hopes and prayers with those trapped and their families. But moving now to a big political headline from down south. Well, in the illegal properties case against Karnataka Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shiv Kumar, there has been a major development. Well, the state government of the cabinet has approved the proposal to withdraw the CBI investigation in the illegal assets case. Well, this proposal was moved by the Home Department before the state cabinet and the cabinet has now approved this. Well, this means that now the case would li is likely to be handed over to the state police or the Loka Yukta unless the CBI of course moves the court. We have considered the opinion given by the Advocate General of the last government and also our Advocate General and we have the cabinet has come to a decision that the decision taken was not in accordance with the law. And well, Pratibha Raman is now joining us live on the phone line. So Pratibha, it was uh, the erstwhile BJP government that had actually handed over this investigation to the CBI. And now the, the Congress government in Karnataka approving the proposal to withdraw this case. What happens next? Is the CBI likely to move uh, the court against this uh, approval or is the case now uh, you know, likely to be handed over to the Loka Yukta or the state police? Well, for keeping in mind that the state, uh, the case be investigated by either the local Yukta or the state police, the cabinet has approved the pro uh, proposal that has been sent by the Home Department, which means that the government will withdraw the sanction given to the CBI, which was earlier provided by the BJP government in uh, the year 2019. And this was done basically to prosecute DK Shiv Kumar in the disproportionate assets case. So in 2017 is when the income tax uh, department had carried out searches and then... Uh, uh, at a later stage, the BJP had given the sanction in 2019 for the CBI to investigate this further. In 2020, the CBI had filed uh, the first FIR against D.K. Shiv Kumar. Now, according to Home Department officials, the state government has the authority to withdraw or amend the orders under Section 21 of General Clauses Act. 
Now, considering that uh, the Karnataka High Court just in a recent uh, hearing uh, had said that the case would be posted to November 29th, we'll have to wait and see what will be the further set of action that will be taken uh, by the uh, present government, whether they would be approaching the court and how uh, this would really stand in, uh, under the court of law, considering that a three months uh, uh, timeline has been given to the CBI to complete the investigation and the CBI has already completed at least around 90% of the investigation. Right, Pratapa, thanks so much for joining us with all those details. An important development, uh, some sort of relief for uh, DK Shiv Kumar, but of course remains to be seen how the investigation continues. And moving now to an NDTV exclusive, well, top intelligence sources have told NDTV that the violence at the Gurudwara in Kapurthala was orchestrated by radical Khalistani supporter Baba Man Singh. When they tried to capture the Gurudwara, Shri Akal Banga Sahib in Sultanpur Lodi of Punjab's Kapurthala. Now, Punjab police constable, remember, was killed and six others were critically injured in the heavy exchange of gunfire. Now, the probe agency NIA has been carrying out raids in Punjab against Khalistani supporters. The NIA has also registered a case against proscribed terrorist Gurpatwan Singh Pannu. Well, this amid a global rise in Khalistani terrorism. We'll take a short break now. There's more news on the other side. Welcome back. There's been an important development in the fight for marriage equality. Lawyer Utkarsh Saxena and his partner Nanya Kotia have sought a review of the October 7 verdict. They've uh, invoked several grounds, including the fact that the majority judgment, they say, in a sense, mischaracterizes their case. They say we're not asking for creation of a new legal status, but we're asking for equal access to the existing social or legal status. They also go on to say in their petition that there's an error in the court's reading of the Special Marriage Act, that it's restricted uh, to only faiths or uh, you know people from various faiths who do not wish to marry, marry within their faiths. They also say that the effect of the Special Marriage Act's provisions and its reading uh, are unconstitutional and discriminatory and the courts must remedy the unconstitutional discrimination. They also say that the majority judgment has uh, made an error in denying adoption rights to queer unions. Moving now to the big international headline, well, the Israel-Hamas ceasefire is expected to start on Friday at 7 a.m. local time. But even after the announcement of the ceasefire on Wednesday, Israel has been bombarding sites in Gaza. Israel's military said 300 targets were hit. Now, the director of Gaza's largest hospital, the Al-Shifa, has been held by Israeli forces. As agreed in the true steel, Hamas will release 13 hostages on November the 24th. Take a look. People dig through rubble to find remains of an Israeli airstrike victim in Gaza's Khan Yunis. This after a ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas was announced. According to reports, more than 100 Palestinians were killed within hours of ceasefire announcement on Wednesday. The deal says Israel and Hamas will swap hostages and prisoners during a four-day pause in fighting. In a late-night announcement, Israel's National Security Advisor, Sarshi Hanepgi, said the hostages won't be released before Friday, a day later than originally expected. On Thursday morning, Israel said it hit 300 Hamas targets on Wednesday, including tunnels and weapon sites, as Israel continued its offensive in Gaza. According to reports, the truce was delayed over last-minute details about which hostages would be released and how. On the other hand, the UN has warned that Gaza is on the verge of a waterborne disease outbreak. People are lacking everything. We have water in the street. And I have been warned that we are on the eve of a waterborne disease outbreak. And this needs absolutely to be prevented. While the deal is delayed, Gazans wait anxiously for it to come into effect. Your report, NDTV. 
So well, this as civilian deaths in Gaza continue unchecked. That's all the time that we have on this bulletin from all of us here. Goodbye.